Live with Men, 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 the podcast. Yes, <laughs> our first episode is here. Men, 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 the podcast has arrived. Yes. Karibu sana kwenye episode ya kwanza ya Men 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 the podcast ambapo we are discussing everything men but specifically about mental health yeah tunakaa pamoja tunazungumza challenges ambazo wanaume tunapitia lakini vile vile ni kwa namna gani these challenges na impact our mental health na what can we do tunapokuwa kwenye such situations nini ambacho tunaweza tukafanya ili kuweza kujikwamua kutokana na stress a uh, drama or the pressure that comes with being a man especially an african man especially a tanzanian man that is what men 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 the podcast is all about join wanaume tukae tuzungumze to discuss challenges zetu and tugundue kwamba kuweka vitu moyoni au kukoma wenyewe it doesn't always work sisi ni vijana sisi wanaume tunapitia mengi sana and that is why we decided to have men 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 the podcast i posted a tweet sometimes uh the end of last year kwamba i'm going to do a podcast on mental health for men so i'm here to deliver on that promise mimi naitwa michael baruti asante sana kwa kusikiliza and i hope you enjoy the ride man i hope at the end of the day utapata kitu ambacho kwa namna moja au nyingine kitarahisisha mizigo mikubwa ambayo wanaume tunaibeba. So karibu sana and asante kwa kuchagua kusikiliza Men 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 the podcast. Na katika episode yetu ya kwanza leo tutakuwa na story ya mtu ambaye anaitwa Mark. Of course uh, Mark so jina lake halisi Mark ni jina ambalo tumempa ili kuweza kuficha identity yake kumfanya comfortable zaidi kuzungumza. Kwa hiyo uh, Mark atatuambia changamoto alizokutana nazo katika maisha yake ambazo zilimvuruga sana to the exit ya kwanza kujiquestion yeye kama mwanaume kwamba kipi ni sahihi kipi ambacho sio sahihi kipi ambacho natakiwa kufanya kipi ambacho sipaswi kufanya katika situation kama inatokaje so so sikiliza na uelewe kitu ambacho Maka alipitia na ni kwa namna gani Maka aliweza ku mpaka kufikia hapo lakini pia tutakuwa na Nadia Ahmed Nadia ni mtaalamu mambo ya shauri na saa au tunasema counseling uh, so Nadia atakata sikiliza na atatuambia kwamba tunapokutana na challenges kama hizo uh, sisi kama wanaume namna gani tuna survive ni namna gani tunaweza tukatoka hapo kwa sababu moja kati ya issue ambazo zilizopo kwa wanaume wengi wa Tanzania ni kwamba hatuzungumzi changamoto zetu tunapenda kuzungumzia mafanikio tunapenda kuona mafanikio lakini hatuzungumzi there is no shame in saying you need help so i hope you enjoy this ride i hope utakana sisi mpaka mwisho utasikiliza na kuna kitu umepata na vile vile kama utakuwa una kitu ambacho nataka kutuambia you know find us check me out on twitter instagram linkedin popote pale facebook popote ambapo unaweza kunipata kwa jina la michael baruti and then niambie chote ambacho nataka kuniambia so karibu sana kwenye episode yetu ya kwanza kabisa ya our podcast men 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 the podcast Men 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 the podcast. podcast. Without further ado, podcast. let me bring to you the guest I'm about to now studio. So on my far left hand side we have Mark. Yeah, Mark Karibu. Asante sana. Yeah, and by the way Mark is not his real name but tumemoku tumemoku mbatizo wa jina studio ili tuweze tuweze kuwa comfortable comfortable zaidi kwenye kuzungumzia challenges ambazo tunataka kuzi kuzi address kwa leo. But apart from that tuna Nadia. Nadia can introduce herself. Hello everyone. I'm Nadia, a psychologist and registered counselor. I know you must be wondering what is she doing in a men men men's podcast, yeah, yeah. but I'm here to chime in and give my two cents on mental health yeah. for men. Amen. For men. Yeah, that's really really important. As we start, ninge ningependa kwanza kwanza kumuuliza Nadia, what is your take on mtazamo wako ku VP kuhusiana swala zima la mental health for men, especially wa Tanzania? Okay. Um So one, mental health is equal for both. Mm. So both and our and our male to not struggle. Mm. You know, we struggle physically, we struggle mentally. But our culture has raised men to be a bit more tougher. Mm. If I can say than women. So when women wanna get in a position kwamba when they are struggling with something, it's harder for them to ask for help. It's harder for people to accept that a man is asking for help. Mm. So even when you master the courage to do ask, mm people are receive you with a bit of hesitation like you you should be able to handle this yeah. you know so mental health for tanzanian men is very important we can calculate the suicide rates in our country yeah they're very high yeah and the percentage is mostly men yeah. you know and suicide is a mental health issue yeah. it's issues that you can get help for yeah. you can be treated for mm. you you don't have to die by suicide but yeah. a lot of our men we losing them 
by that. A lot of our men are struggling to cope, are struggling, but no one knows. You know, marriages fail, uh, families are disrupted, children are hurt, um, jobs are lost because of mental health issues that we're dealing with that we're not ready to accept and we don't know where to go for help. Yeah, and so let me ask you this. Katika muda ambao umefanya kazi, especially kwenye mambo ya kutoa ushauri, counseling and therapy, ukijaribu kuangalia in terms of ratio ya watu ambao wanakuja zaidi kwa kati ya wanaume na wanawake, ipi imezidi zaidi? Oh, hands down I get more women in my practice than men. But I do have men. This is interesting. Yes. This is really, really interesting. So we'll get into that a little bit later. Yeah. Mark. Yes, sir. Mambo Vipi. Safi, Nice seeing you, man. Nice seeing you. The reason you're here, or the reason I thought combat was ni muhimu zaidi kwanza kuzungumza na wewe kwenye ni kwamba I know you went through some stuff in the past. But for people who do not know, can you just tell us what happened to you or what? Can you share with us the whole ordeal you experienced na what it did to you? Sijui nianzie wapi? Anzia mwanzo mzee. <laughs> okay. Kwangu mimi ilianza the moment uh, nilipofunga ndoa. Mm-hmm. So nafikiri kama mtu mwingine yote niliingia kwenye ndoa nikiwa na <laughs> hopes and dreams kama mtu mwingine yote na expectations. Tuseme kuanzia mwezi mmoja au miwili baada ya kuwa katika ndoa nilianza ku notice vitu ambavyo kwa mwenzangu ambavyo before havikuwepo kabisa ni kama vile kuna upande fulani nikaanza kuona ambao kwa muda nilikuwa najaribu kukataa ndani ya akili yangu kutokana na jinsi mimi ninavyofahamu na nilivyomzoea after miaka minne sasa saba then ya kuwa pamoja so you dated for about four years yes kitu kama then, yes okay. kwa hiyo nilikuwa na ile imani ya four years kwamba huyu mtu namfahamu vizuri na nimesha kuwa naye vizuri na hakukuwa na jipya la kutarajia zaidi ya kufanya mipango ya kuendelea mbele zaidi baada ya kuwa nimefunga ndoa kama um, almost mwezi mmoja hivi nilivamiwa na vibaka nikaibiwa simu na wallet and everything unaona no, yeah so sikuwa hewani kwa muda wa kama miezi mitatu okay nilikuwa napatikana kwanza lakini sikuwa kwenye social media so kwa kukiibuka issues sensitive issues ambazo labda ni za familia na nini na nini alikuwa ananipatia simu yake ndio anaangalia kwa kupitia zile groups kwa sababu naye yupo just once sio hata kwamba mtu ulikuwa na hiyo intention lakini nilijikuta nime stumble upon chat room yake ile lakini ilitokea tu nilikuwa nimefungua conversation moja sikuwa hata nime plan au sikuwa nafikia chochote text ambazo zilikuwa tu hapo hapo displayed hapo baada tu ya kufungua zilikuwa zinaonyesha something totally different kana kwamba kulikuwa kama kuna mahusiano ambayo yanaonekana yalisitishwa baada ya yeye kuingia kwenye ndoa like yalikuwa na exist mpaka mnapoenda kwenye ndoa exactly. like, immediately baada ya ndoa ndo they stop uh-huh. wow. sasa kilichokuwa hapo kinazungumziwa ni kama u- discussion ya kwa nini alisita na if anything yanawezaje kurudishwa given the situation ilivyo Nili address the situation niliongea na best friend wangu akaambia bana wewe cha kufanya table this thing muongelee kwa sababu uwezo wa kanao ndani so i did na yeye yeah, akawa ameniashua kwamba it's really not kila ambacho nakifikiria unaona so my anyway maybe nikaachana na unaona lakini hiyo ndio kwa ni first hint Um, miezi sita mbele sikuwa tena ukatokea sui incident gani sikumbuka lakini nikawa tena nina simu yake nikakutana tena the, the same name so when i looked ndo nikakuta huyu mwanzangu anamwambia yule bwana kwamba i want you and you will always be on my mind now the guy akawa ana react kwa kuisha kama vile is trying to kuweka space flani na nini kwamba hey, but you know kwa jamaa uh, kwa anambia kwamba yeah, you know your situation now na nini and i believe things are okay at your home na nini so yeah kwa anamjibu anambia yeah things may be okay but you may be even better you see 
and I saw that. Na basi kwa ni conversation hivyo ikawa inasema kwamba I think it's not a bad thing if you if we still a kiss from time to time na see how that goes. I got furious like anybody would. I got furious. Tuagombana sana. Basi toka wakati huo mimi ninacha kama a, a mark ambayo sikuwahi ku anticipate especially kwa huyu mtu. You see. Tuli jaribu ku fix your situation na nini? Yeah of course tuli fix your situation. Na mimi nikaenda nikaongea paka na how, how how did you fix it? We had to talk. Just you and her. Yeah. You did involve the hope you know how we solve our problems call your parents call my parents you know call the priest da da da, da. everybody there oh you you went uh, uh, just the two of you mimi sikutaka itoke mm. uh, for for maybe one or two reasons kwanza kwangu ni kwa naona aibu mm. kwamba ndani ya huu muda mfupi siwezi kwanza kuja na issue kama hizi from my wife kwangu mimi imekuwa ni kitu ambacho niliona aibu sana and then chapili nikasema mm, you know hii ni ndoa so maybe hii ndo tunaita misalaba yenyewe ambayo you have to ku fight now yeah. so before nianze kukimbilia huku na huku mm-hmm. ngoja nikomae mwenyewe and i did and we fixed it so i thought naona mm-hmm. nikawa napitia kipindi fulani kigumu cha kuwa na mawazo sana because i don't know how it works but kwa tu sisi wanaume mm-hmm. when you face situation kama hii kwa mtu wako kidogo ni ngumu sana kukaa sawa tena mm. we built to be tough na nini unaona yeah, so as a man how did it did it make you you know ilikufanya wewe uanze ku self a bit of self doubt hicho ndio kitu cha kwanza ambacho anafanya yeah. kwa sababu unaanza kujiuliza maswali mengi kwamba na fail wapi you know i work to the bone to provide unaona Najinyima so many things just to make sure I keep things steady. Mm-hmm. You see? Na kama huyu mtu akili yake anakuwa namna hii. Ina maana huko kwingine atakapokuwa anaenda potential atakuwa na jaribu kutafuta vitu ambavyo clearly hapa hamna. You see? So hiyo kwa mimi kama mwanaume inakushusha sana. Ina ku demoralize yana kuvuruga utaanza ku feel like you're not good enough for anything utaanza ku feel like yani you were meant to suffer unaona hata baada ya ku solve hiyo kitu hiyo hiyo hilo kovu unabaki nalo unajua it will take time yeah, to heal to yeah, heal yeah. na sio tu time pia ta take effort ya mwanzako pia mm. kukusaidia ku heal unaona lakini kwa upande wake yeye sasa haikuwa tena hivyo kwa sababu it's like gradually alikuwa anaenda anazidi kurudi kule sasa the worst part ni kwamba nilikuwa namuona and i did not know what to do sikujua namfata nani na hata ningejua kumfata sikujua namwambia nini lakini kabla ya divorce tuliachana kwa fashion ya yeye kuniambia mimi kwamba hakuwa tayari kuingia kwenye ndoa alifanya mistake alidhani uh, kwa kuolewa na mimi angekuwa ame change au fix maisha yake kwa namna moja ama nyingine kama vile ambavyo mtoto ambavyo angeweza ka expect lakini baada ya kuingia kwenye ndoa ali realize kwamba sivyo so oh, hebu take it back a little bit alisema kwamba alikuwa anategemea kwamba ange fix maisha yake do you know alikuwa na maanisha nini alipokuwa chuo alipata mtoto yeah. kwa hiyo lile hicho la familia kwake lilibadilika uh, expectations za uh, familia kwa ujumla zilibadilika mm-hmm. na clearly alianza kupitia treatment ambayo haikuwa nzuri kuna yeye huko kwao alikuwa under so much pressure unaona na wakati huo wote mimi ndo nilikuepo nikimsupport kwa namna zote ambazo naweza na yule mtoto aliyekuwa amemzaa hakuwa wangu 
but me me I just need chukua tu vyote nafikiri alikuwa anajua kwamba akiingia kwenye ndoa perhaps haya huku sasa nayo yatazimika lakini sasa mimi sasa nicho establish hicho ndio alichokuwa anakisema nicho ki notice ni kama vile yeye kwanza kwa kupata mtoto ile life aliyokuwa anataka ku, ku, ku experience alikosa tena hiyo chance lakini sasa ukiingia kwenye ndoa unaingia kwenye ulimwengu wa responsibility nyingine kabisa unaona ambayo sasa na hiyo nayo ikaanza kama kumbana you see wa upande mmoja wakati pia tumeingia kwenye ndoa after a while i had to leave my relatives wako amekuja na nini na nini and then wako anataja place to stay na nini so i had to stay with them because i had a, um, a fairly big house na kwa chuo nikawa nakaa nao ambayo nafikiri kwa context yetu ya Kiafrika huwa sio tatizo sana tunakuwa kwenye nyumba za ndugu zetu extended family eh hey, yani yeah. sisi mimi mwenyewe pia nimeishi hivyo nimekuwa hivyo no yeah. kwa hiyo it's ni kitu ambacho wala hata sio cha kujiuliza sana nilianza ku notice hiyo ilianza kumpa pressure au kumfanya kuwa uncomfortable sasa mimi kama najiuliza kwa mtu ambaye hata naye mwenyewe pale kwa ameishi watu wengi sana na alikuwa totally okay how comes huku inakuja kuwa that much of a problem ndio 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 kwamba no hiyo haiwezi kuwa tatizo lazima utoe kuna kitu kingine sasa hiyo ilikuwa during that time sasa ambao tuko kwenye ndoa ambapo baadaye idadi ya wanaume kwenye maisha yake tuliongezeka from aliye rasmi ambaye i believe ilikuwa ni mimi tu wengine ambao kama wanne au watano na hao na wataja ni wao ambale, ambao actually nilipata evidence you see yeah. raw untouched evidence after the divorce after the whole separation thing maisha yake ilikuwa just from there um did you uliona immediately after the divorce did you feel kwamba sasa I'm better off on my own au ilikuwa ni kipindi ambacho yani like you really really struggle ku kurudi kwenda ndio kawaida kwanza <coughs> the divorce ilichukua muda unajua amwezi msema ninaachana leo and then kesho kishokutwa divorce yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. ndoa au relationship inachukua watu wawili so kuna hicho kifungo kwanza yani ambacho mimi nilikuwa naishi nacho every day unaamka asubuhi unalala usiku yani uko mwenyewe na yeye yupo but uko mwenyewe paka hapo unakuwa tayari umeshaingia kwenye shimo moja ambalo you first have to climb up ili tu kwanza ufike kwenye ile normal level unaona kwa yeye baada ya kufanya ile mambo yote finally akaja akaniambia kwamba ndio hiyo hakuwa tayari na nini na kwa sababu hiyo ameamua kuupanga sehemu yake anahamia huko amelipa rent ya miezi sita atakapomaliza rent yake then maybe tutaweza kuongea wakati huo mimi nilikuwa tayari ni kama yule mtu ambaye anajua kifo kipo imminent yani kwamba it's just a matter of sangapi but you will die unaona siku ananipigia simu niko kazini anambia we need to talk kuna kitu kiliniingia nikajua kabisa kwamba leo ndo siku ya kupewa notice. Nikarudi nyumbani, nikakaa nacho ndo akaniambia vitu kwa hiyo aliponiambia hivyo mimi nilitoka hapo yani niliwatarifu tu kwamba yametimia. Hakukuwa na kingine zaidi basi. Kesho yake alitoka akaenda kazini na ndio hakurudi tena. Nikawa nimeachwa kwenye mji wangu wa ndoa na ndugu zangu wanaoniona na struggle but hawajui ni kitu gani presa wanajua yule ananisumbua lakini mimi siwezi kuwafungukia wao as it is wana depend kwangu na waonyeshaje kwamba niko broken kiasi hiki ndani sina wa kumwambia you see huwezi kulia because a man is not supposed to cry mark Yeah, That's my dad what, told me that. That is what we, that is what we were told. Mm-hmm. This were kids like a man is not supposed to cry. My dad and Nambia is such a kid to men don't cry. Mm-hmm. So 
baada kama two or three days ndio kwa fahamisha ndugu zangu what had been happening kwa mimi pale from the day muondoka tarehe moja december 2016 from that day mimi nianza ku fight ku rebuild maisha yangu mimi kama mimi mwenyewe binafsi sikuwa napakwenda a time or two nilikachenda nikazungumza na mapadri wakanishauri vizuri sana namna kufanya na nini lakini pia kuna ndugu zake wengine tulikaa nao wakawa na <coughs> wana sorry wanajaribu ku resolve yeah, ku resolve But, lakini yeah. at that point did you feel like ingeza kuwa resolved or for you kuna jo kwamba it's gone Uh, it was a dead horse. Mimi nilikuwa ni yani nilikuwa naiona because wao chakuwa wanajaribu ku hawakuwa wanajaribu ku resolve in such. Yeah. Walikuwa wanajaribu kukiondoa hiki kikombe cha aibu kukirudisha kwangu kiendelee kuharibikia huko. The problem itself how we addressed. People will pay any, any price to avoid it. Unaona? Lakini zile small small related issues na nini you came home late um mm-hmm. So you define nini? Oh you have to treat your wife like this. Oh no, sisi ni like you guys, yani. Mimi ngoja kana kuna kikao kimoja tuweka na another older brother of mine akaja which is one about ifanye hivyo. What is stick kwenye such issues. And so mimi nimekaa pale niko kimya tu. Baada ya kikao, so I sat with my brother and I gave him the full black and white. None. He got pissed. Kwamba kwa nini wamenipotezea muda wangu kumbe If, kama haya yote yakuwa nafanyika the why do we sit down tunaongelea vitu kama vile oh you guys need another house you need a new yani yeah. akasema this thing yani paka hapa it's a disaster you know sometimes watu waki wakipitia hivi vitu wago nitafuta coping mechanism mm-hmm. kuna wengine they get into alcohol you know um, mtu anakuwa yani tungi 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 vibaya uh, kuna wengine drugs abuse you know kuna wengine wanashindwa kujicontrol na ingia kwenye madeni you know it's a whole lot of things what was your coping mechanism kuna wengine wanaamua sasa ndio wanafanya kazi 24/7 like they do not do any other thing for you can you say uh, unaweza kusema if you look at it now you know unaweza kusema what do you think was your coping mechanism how did you manage the whole situation it was quite a heavy situation yeah. it sounds and it went on for so long How did you manage to kind of cope with it? Yeah. Think, yeah. yeah. There was no breathing being that could help. So you have to turn your hopes to that one direction ambao unajua. Yaani unajua huwa it doesn't fail anyone. Mm-hmm. Even if you don't see results but you know others get results. So at least you na kupa moyo you can sleep tonight after you pray knowing kwamba you will wake up tomorrow did you consider therapy at uh, one point did it cross your mind it did like in this uh, i felt like i didn't know what i was going to say to the therapist that's yeah. first and then chapili i felt like kwa nature situation yangu takuwa kama vile namkwaza au nampotezea mda guys like us we just meant to you know struggle on your own and find your own ways out you know yeah and Don't that is why, and that is why we have this man 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 the podcast we got to talk this thing through man mm. um well Nadia uh, you know um as a person I'm going to uh una deal na na akili na emotions za watu uh i know that probably there's somebody who's listening now ambayo who's listening to us right now probably they're going through a similar situation or they know somebody mm. who is going through a similar situation you know Um, what 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 would first of all what would you advise kwa mtu ambaye anapiga situation kama hiyo what is the best thing to do okay so that's a that's a tough question what what you can do it depends on your unique situation you know it depends on the the the, the situation you're in one depends on you as a person and the resources you have around you because you mentioned a lot that there were people around you but you didn't feel comfortable sharing it with them also the people you are actually looking after so it didn't feel that that you you didn't feel like burdening and it felt like it would be a burden mm-hmm. uh, and even considering therapy you you thought then there there isn't a solution for this i'll just be again 
burdening mm-hmm. this therapist yeah. with my problems that I can't really there isn't a solution in sight you know um, but I feel when you're in Kamoko when you're situation coming as if I just take a step back one accept those feelings and I think that's the biggest thing most of us men and women but mostly men deny themselves of feeling the sadness they like felt extremely sad and angry but you feel like okay i cannot express this because i either look like an aggressive person yeah. or i'll look weak yeah. exactly you know? which i mean if you are having those emotions then y- you should be able to express them you know even though not you are society you're raised from a young boy a young girl like you mia kaanguka pale analia watambembeleza it's okay yeah but a young boy akidondoka akaumia same like the young girl and no no shit's fine yeah, boys don't cry yeah, boys you know don't you're cry, strong yeah. Yeah. you know you don't cry like your sister mm. yeah, so from a young age you're kind of shaped and molded to deny yourself of expressing your emotions i think the first step is what in ability to aware kwamba if you're feeling an emotion you're supposed to be expressing it you know emotions don't choose male or female mm. it, it's not about gender these norms that we're taught men don't cry or boys don't cry that's that's normative you know it's culturally constructed yeah. socially constructed but if we are biologically capable of feeling these emotions these are chemical neurons yes. hormones that are just produced in your body yeah. so if they they're not supposed to be felt by men why is the male anatomy producing them you know so i feel the first step just allow yourself to feel the emotion and if, if it's not with someone else then at least acha monyes when you sit somewhere just to embrace that okay I, right now i'm feeling very angry and i'm feeling very sad like i know culture says i should be strong you know i'm a man but this is what i'm feeling i think that's one thing most of us kind of overlook we see like it's pointless what what's the point of me crying but trust me if you've ever had a crying session you know how helpful it is a small fraction yeah. of weight has been reduced and you're able to now take more hits Mm. Yeah. But if you hold that that feeling inside, it's like something is choking you literally. And it's looking for this form of expression. Yeah. But high party. So it, again, and that's how people end up doing these negative coping mechanisms. There are some positive ones like turning to religion, faith. Faith is a big thing. You know, not everyone is religious, but for those who are, faith is a big protective factor. You know, turning to something that's bigger than yourself is very protective. Because yeah. when you're facing a problem, you, your view is very becomes very narrow. You just see the problem, you know, and you just see how huge this problem that you're facing right now is. What faith does for you is it narrows it up. Like you said, sure there must be people God has helped and others that hasn't, but there is some faith that helps to broaden your view, opens your view. Come, I'm not the only one struggling. You know, there's many of us going through yeah, this. Yeah. It actually takes your mind, your focus away from your problem, sort of zoning into it. It helps you see the bigger picture that yeah, this is shitty. It's happening to me. Yeah. And I feel terrible about it, but then I'm not alone in it. That's the first step. Cuz when you kick out, you're focusing on just this my life is going haywire and you just focus on the life, your life going haywire. You can't think of solutions. Yeah. Cuz you're just focusing on the problem. Oh. You know, but you're taking that step back and seeing the bigger picture. Kwamba not denying kwamba it's terrible. Yeah. No one wants to be in such a position. You know, so when something like this happens, it's not something you're prepared for because you've entered it with all the best of intention. There's something I was reading a couple of days ago uh on a similar kwamba society was kwa set up ni kwamba wanawake au wasichana toka wadogo they are being told about these things. Mm-hmm. You know, they're being told how to treat a man, how to deal with the husband, and don't have to come up. As for guys, we just got to somehow find our way through it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, and nobody prepares you for how to have or how to deal with these things if it's okay. And again, like you mentioned, <coughs> um, I think or when you were, you were speaking, you were saying, okay, this usually a woman, it's okay for your husband to be cheating on you. You know, it's not okay. <laughs> Let me take that back. <laughs> But it's common. Ah, we hear that. <laughs> we, hear, we hear that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And because again from the dawn of time, mothers would speak to their daughters as you said, we're prepared from a young age. You get married, this is what happens because of the whole the culture and the community you're raised in. 
and they're not shy to talk <coughs> about if the husband has stepped out. Yeah. Mm. You know, I know a lot of families where parents really cross those bound, boundary lines with their children because some children are told, your father is doing this to me. Mm. You know, your father is stepping out, but I'm staying here because of you. You know? Mm. Because of y'all's future. So Th- does I, that help the child really? It doesn't. It really screws the child over. <laughs> That's yeah, another imagine. problem. For That's another yeah. conversation yes, for some other for time. For some other day. But from a young age, we see moms, mothers, talking openly, Kwamba, men cheat. You know, women grow up knowing men cheat. So mm. we build these coping skills to cope when my husband, boyfriend, partner cheats. I know what to do. Template to Nile. Mama stayed. You know, she stuck to it. Yeah. She, she, you know, she was faithful and she stayed in the marriage. But you rarely hear stories of women <coughs> cheating on their husbands. But it's not that it doesn't happen. Again, as you said, you fault as a man. I can't. This is shameful. Yeah. That for me to accept that my wife is cheating on me. Yeah. It, how do I stand up in front of the crowd and say, or in front of, you know, society and say my wife cheated on me? It's it's also that that's one of the reasons why a lot of men hold hold this back. Because it's not that women never cheat. Women cheat. Like humans cheat. <laughs> yeah, it's a you know, human it's, beings, yeah. Yeah, we're we're fallible. You know, but the picture that has been painted as mostly men are the ones who step out. Yeah. Men are the ones who ruin their families. Men are the ones who kind of wreck things. You know? So women are so much more prepared to deal with all these things that will come about in result to a man's actions. But men aren't really prepared. You know, and I'm not I, I don't know if fathers speak to their sons and prepare them about these things but our cultures i think our families in Tanzania i don't think you're even even mothers talk mothers talk openly okay. but i don't think fathers talk about marriage this is what marriage will be like to yeah. their sons it's more so you need to be make working hard making money you're the provide. provider yeah. mm, provide, yes. provide 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 mm. but there isn't anything to do what happens when my wife does something that angers me or what happens if i'm emotionally checking out of this marriage what should i do they don't tell you yeah. you know and the picture they show you is just deal with it you know you're just the provider yeah. you're you're supposed to be calm and collected always yeah. so mark i want to ask you something here i know for most part of your life umekuwa zaidi na mama you know as in umekuwa close zaidi na mama na mama ndo umekuwa naye karibu zaidi kuliko baba Yes. <coughs> Unadhani how do you feel kwamba maybe absence ya baba kwa muda mrefu kwako labda ime au imechangia somehow some way kuleta ugumu labda uh, kwenye connection within the marriage do you ishe kutoka hapo kafikiria hivi kwamba kama labda mzee angekuwa around more maybe um angenipa advice more jinsi ya kudeal ya mambo mm-hmm. probably ningeza kupata guidance kwa hiyo maybe ningeza kuona ili ningeza kuona ili swala mbali kabla hata haijatokea have you ever uh, had that thought many times actually <clears throat> kwa sababu kama wasema i grew up um kwa kulelewa na mama for the better part of my life toka mdogo toka na kuwa mama kwangu mimi had to be mama na baba she gave everything she had and she could unaona mm. alifanya everything lakini mwisho wa siku yeye ni mama hawezi aka foot huo pande wa pili wa baba even though she will try na hiyo imekuwa ina impact kwa sababu unajua kuna stages ambazo mtu anaanza kuwa mwanaume unakuwa unahitaji that guidance na ile tu presence ya baba <coughs> inakusaidia kukujenga hata katika decision making na nini lakini mimi mama alikuwa anacheza kuhakikisha kwamba yeye mwenyewe yupo na even though baba yupo basi hata ile kidogo tu tunaweza kupata lakini sasa as a man mimi mwenyewe nimechajitambua ni mwanaume na nini na hata naanza kubeba majukumu hapa na pale mara nyingi sana ni kwa natamani uwepo wa baba kwa sababu kuna vitu ambavyo sasa mimi nishakuwa mwanaume siwezi kwenda kumwambia mama na kaji siku zinazozidi kwenda nayo vinazidi kuongezeka unaona mm. okay vipo ambavyo unaweza kujadiliana nayo vile ambavyo ni vya kimaisha maisha na nini lakini kuna vile vitu ambavyo wanaume mnakaa chini mnaongea unakuwa huwezi so you have to find maybe an older brother au mm. uncle nani yo yeah you know kwa kwangu absence ya baba ime ilinipa gap fulani kubwa la kiume 
ambao naamini kama angekuepo kweli kuna baadhi ya vitu at least vile ki angeweza kunisaidia i have a son two actually ambao na imagine wao wakuwe bila mimi kwanza i get scared kwa sababu mimi nimekuwa bila baba unaona so i get scared at the thought ya kwamba wao wanakuwa alafu mimi sipo i don't know i took off or whatever no ni kitu ambacho sitaki kuwa deny i would rather wani, wawe na mimi wanipate mimi mpaka pale watakapona kwamba all right mzee pumzika unaona mm. lakini ni wepo and i play my part kwa sababu impact yake ndo kama hiyo uh, for instance ni kirefa kwenye hii situation yangu yeah. many times ni kwa natamani my dad angekuepo many times ni kwa natamani ningeweza kukaa naye chini and just just nionge naye tu kama mzee not necessarily even nataka kumwambia matatizo yangu but just yeye yeah, awe have a conversation yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kwa sababu kama vile ambavyo alivyo mama hata pia ni nguzo ya maisha unaona nitam shield mama from my problems kwa sababu najua akijua itam devastate mara mbili you see so no maana na bebo mzigo peke yangu you said something mm. really really important i would like to hear what mtazamo uh, wa nadia kwamba as a man you felt like kulikuwa kuna umuhimu wewe kumprotect your mom from knowing challenges ambazo unapitia lakini mm. unadhani kama baba angekuepo ungeweza kukaa naye mkaongea kus- yes um nadia how important is it to have uh, 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 how, how do you i don't even know how to put this but mm. how do you deal with such situation kwamba i wish my father was here but he's not here mm-hmm. siwezi kumwambia mama kwa sababu ya a b c d babu you know labda mama taumia au nini and mm. wanaume kama walivyo in nature we are very protective of the people that we love you know mama zetu wake zetu watoto wetu you know mm-hmm. so how do you go about that how you what's your take on that kind of thing au kwa mtu ambaye yupo kwenye that kind of situation how yeah i think in that situation when the father figure is not present you know um you need to look at okay what are the resources i know you mentioned an older brother or an uncle or someone there like cuz kuna umuhimu wa kwa familiarity so it's man to man the conversation is going to be different woman to woman the conversation is different and again it all goes back to culture and the social norms and etc you know cuz then you're feeling that okay my mother is here someone i can talk to but i want to protect her nataka ni ni shield as a you that i'm struggling or i'm again you're being that protective you're anticipating how she will feel about it denying how you're feeling yes about that situation you know and that's something a lot of men i just like grow up with can you expand on that a little bit more i'll take it back to culture and so- social norms and traditions yeah. you know this male is a protector it's yes it's we can if we look at evolution we look at the times have passed the way things are mm. it's kind of molded and shaped and put a man in the position of being a protector and a provider yeah. you know and in a situation where you feel i need some support i need you need it at that point you needed your mom or anyone else around you to think about how you're feeling and how we can protect you mm-hmm. yeah but automatically because of the traditions the culture the male norm and stereotype and gender you took a step back and thought how will she feel if i am to share what i am feeling right now exactly. you know which is another burden you're placing on yourself mm. yeah there isn't any other way around it it's it's really important to kujua kwamba how she deals with it and how she receives it is her you know as much as we want to protect and shield people she probably ended up finding out at yeah, the end did. you know so rather <clears throat> seeing looking out for you i know it's it's uh, it's against our culture or tradition to be selfish this is why we have this podcast here we we <laughs> yes. want to challenge those things yes yeah. so this it's it's basically se- general self care you know you thinking about you first do i i need to speak to someone about this and i trust my mother you know she's been there all my life she's the one who raised me she knows me in and out yeah so that when when you feel the need to protect her that's that's a cue for you to take a step back and think okay maybe maybe she can handle it you know cuz i need this the most just gauging that a lot of the times we we struggle on our own because of that oh i don't i don't know how they will handle it 
I feel it will be a burden on them. Or you start now anticipating, analyzing how the other person will feel once you share what you're going through. That's not your job. You know, it, it doesn't, it's not your job how the other person will feel. You know, it's how you choose to convey your message or convey what you're going through. That's important. Because, yeah, no takuta, but after a while, after everything goes down, she'll be like, why didn't you come to me and tell this? You know, why, didn't, why did you have to go through this alone? You know, and then it's another issue that, okay, then th- that brings up feelings of, okay, maybe he doesn't trust me enough. Or maybe I wasn't good enough of a mother. Mm. Uh, you know, I didn't parent my child well enough to feel comfortable and confident to talk to me. So now you are avoiding burdening her. But in hindsight, yeah, we don't know. Yes. Problem, problem. You know, you don't know what, what will come up in her mind. When it comes to mental health, social support is so important. I, can't, I don't even know how, how to stress that. It yeah, is so, but, so but important. Then in mo- sometimes I feel like in most cases, people are tunangale watu na utuzunguka and the first thing that comes to our mind is are they going to judge me for that? Mm. You know? <laughs> Inakuja kwa kesi ya maka, alikuwa nafikiria kwamba as a man, watanichukulia jamii na penda kuambia kwamba my wife cheated on me yeah. not once, not twice. Mm. You know? So then unaanza ku question uh, okay who do I talk to a lot yes. of a lot of any a lot of that inakuja kichwani kwako yeah. you know a lot of that inakuja kichwani kwako ndio maana nikamuuliza kwamba did you think about therapy but then mm. inakuja sala vile understanding yetu sisi kama wa Tanzania about therapy it's yani sio kitu ambacho tumekulia nacho tutaambiwa nenda kanisani mm. au ongea na mtu fulani ongea na mtu fulani mm. lakini hakuna oh. mtu ambaye anakuambia nenda kwenye therapy yeah. though i know it helps nimekutana na watu ambao wameenda kwenye therapy na wamesema ni kwa namna gani niwasaidie mm. coming back from will they judge me or will they like um, look at me different after i tell them what what i'm going through yeah. i think most important you can't avoid that because again we cannot control other people We really we have no power whatsoever over the next person. We just have control over ourselves, you know. But the key thing to look for when you do decide, okay, I, I think I need to speak to someone about this. Someone you trust. So that's the first thing I stress. Mm-hmm. Is this person a person you trust and you, you have faith that they will not be judgmental? That's another thing that we were often scared about is okay nikimwambia mm-hmm. mm-hmm. huyu kitafika na kwa jirani na oh the boy. next person yeah. and the next person and the next thing i know there's salam zima wanajua what i'm going to <laughs> and there's some such a small city <laughs> exactly and everybody everyone knows, knows everybody <laughs> <laughs> yes so that that's tough this is our reality yeah. sometimes some people don't even choose to be judgmental it's just it's this automatic thing that happens yeah. but You need to be the person to gauge, okay? Is this person, do I trust this person? Do I, have I trusted them before? And people gain your trust. You don't just trust someone yeah. randomly. Kuna wajaribu na vitu kidogo kidogo. Tell them something small, see their reaction. So before you like give them the whole, bomb. the whole package, the whole bomb, you start small, small bits of information and see how they react to that. Yeah. You know, so come on, you test them in a way. It's like you're vetting yeah. to see, is this person... You know can can I trust them? Yeah. Cuz that's how do you get trust? You you do that slowly. Gradually you you test them, you see how they respond, how they react to the information, what they do with it. You know, and then that's how you you gain that confidence. So they need to gain these trust points from you. Consciously I'm trying to test you. I'm testing you. Mm. They don't need to know that you're testing them. Yeah, yeah. Where I just give them pieces of you know, mm-hmm. little information that you're you're okay with getting out there. So just in case it does, yeah. it's not something that will harm you. But if they keep on showing you that okay, I'm trustworthy, I'm not I'm keeping it, I'm not being judgmental, then once they've gained a lot of your trust points, then you know, okay, this person I can actually trust. If they do break your trust after that, at least you've done your due diligence. Yeah. Sometimes the people we kabisa had to jawafikiria kabisa are the ones that will keep your trust. Yeah. The ones you are like this person I can trust 100% is the one that will break it. Yeah. You know, so people surprise you. Uh, how important was it for you to have the right support system mm. to to help you get through what you were going mm. through then? How important was it? It was very important. In, the, in during that time you're going through something major, mm. you see? You're not living a normal life. It's like if this is the road where every uh, that's 
that everyone is walking on, you're on the side road, you see? You probably, your, your, your vehicle probably has three tires or something. That, that's where you are, you see? Mm. So everything else is normal, save from you. You know, getting support. First, in my case, Ilivyokuwa, during that difficult time, I think what you're coming is Unguka. Waliona kwamba, I'm trying hard to be strong, no? Mm. I'm trying hard to be tough. So what they did, wali, wow, one or another, wali, wali nisaidia kwa kupunguza the pressure around me. Mm. You see? So I can't support it. It made sana. you feel like it's okay not to be okay. Yeah. Mm. No, yeah. Wali yeah. nisha it's all right. Na, not only that, sisi tupo, and most importantly, we understand. No? Mm. So, you will feel down, you you feel bad, it's okay, you know, we're here, no, no. Um, I got my brothers, my friends, you know, we'll go out, uh, come on, man, uh, after work, come on, let's go out, do this, do that, mm. have fun, go home, sleep, no, no. So, I had that kind of support, no, no. Most people around me will want to avoid bringing up the subject, mm. no, no. Now, is that a good thing or not a good thing? Because sometimes we know our friends are going through yes. stuff and we want to be there for them. But then we feel like, should mm. I bring this up or should I not bring this up? Mm. Yeah, that's that's another tricky thing. You need to like kind of really gauge. Because sometimes it's really important when people see that you're struggling. When someone acknowledges that I notice that you're you're fighting really hard to, to go to get through the day. That That in itself... Someone seeing that we're going through something is is a is a really good thing, you know, for your emotional well-being or mental well-being. Yes. Because then, you, at that point, you know that this person actually cares enough to point out that they're noticing me struggling. So, oh. Apo, they're identifying themselves as a support, a potential support structure or unit. Yeah. You know, because when when people avoid, then you start questioning: Am I am I supposed to be feeling this way? You know, people are, I know they can see what yeah, I'm going through, yeah. but no one's really addressing it. So your your emotions, you yourself, it feels like you're not being seen. But in other moments, you need people to kind of not poke and prod yeah, exactly. when you're still trying to process everything that's happening. Mm. So it is very tricky. So it really Such is about finding that balance. Yes, yeah. it's wow. really finding that balance. Because I want you to tell me, oh, Nadia, I know you've had a hard day. Yeah. yeah, let's let's go have a drink. Other days, I want you to be like, yeah, yeah you, you you you're 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 coping very well. Mm. You know, you you're doing very well, and just avoid that subject. Yeah, but you really need to. It's it's quite it's quite difficult, but you need to really observe the person that's going through this and see what what would they need right now. Yeah. And we give out those cues. Yeah. You know, some days we're much stronger than others. Other days we like we slack. Yeah. When we're we're trying so hard to keep this front. Then no matter what you see, you see, go and get this wall. Just don't knock it because it's it's a very fragile wall that mm. I'm putting up, and for now I need it to be up there so I can process. Mm. You know, other times where the wall is is semi there, where we're we're expressing but we're not. Mm. That's the time you need to step in and say, I see this is this is what's happening. Do you want to talk about it? You know, it's as simple as that. Do you want to talk? I'm yeah. here if you want to talk to me. That's like an invitation. Mm. If the person does not want to talk about it, they're like, no, no, it's fine. I'm okay. Thank you. Yeah. But if they needed someone to talk to, that invite is all he needed or she needed to just open up. Yeah. So basically, it is really, really important to have that a very good support system. Yes. Watu ambao na kujua, watu ambao na elewa. Probably people who understand what you're going through. Then in a quarter when you kuza kujua how to deal with you mm. um, in such case. Are you happy now? Yes I am. Uh, you found love again? Oh yes. I <laughs> crawled up the hole, man. <laughs> <laughs> I you, found the light. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, things are things are better now. And I'm blessed with the sun. Wow. 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 Yeah. And you feel like you're in a very good place mentally and emotionally right now? Now I feel very good. I'm very happy. Um I often look back at where I, where, where I went and what I've been through. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just appreciate everything and that I'm still alive and I didn't lose my mind even though I was that close, you know. But that, 
interesting. If you were to advise someone who's about to get into marriage now, I'm not. I'm not saying. I, I hope you're not going to tell them don't get married. <laughs> but if you are to advise somebody who's about to get into marriage, yes. as as a man, what would you tell mm-hmm. another man? Two things. First of all, um, that's from my perspective. Mm. Mm. Marriage was never and is not a problem. It wasn't. In my case, I love being married. I enjoyed it. It's something that I'm still, you know, I'm looking forward to it, you know? It's something that I believe it's natural to human beings and at some point, we all need that. That lifetime commitment. It's it's a good thing, you know? It sets a good foundation for family and everything and I, I support that by 110%. People are the ones with problems. Not the marriage. The marriage is there. Yeah. The marriage is there. Yeah. But we are the ones with issues. Yeah. If you, it's like saying maybe what it's um how should I maybe like like a job post or something, a position. Mm. The position is there, but who qualifies for it? Yeah. You see. Well, that's the nice way to look mm. at it. Yeah. If you qualify, you will get it and you will enjoy um, working on it, performing and enjoying the benefits. But if you don't say if you pick someone random and you just put him in that position, they will fail, probably collapse the entire company, you see? Mm. So it's something of that sort. So marriage, it's not a problem. Mm. We are the problem. People have issues, you see? So that's the first thing. That's the first thing I would say. But the second thing is, if a person wants to get married, if they feel they're ready and they have the right mm. person, then go ahead. Mm. Go ahead. Don't even waste time, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice, man. Mm-hmm. Nadia, um, how do people get in touch with you? If a person is listening to us right now and they feel like, man, I really, really need some help. Yeah. Oh, I need somebody to talk to. How do they reach out to you? Well, I'm all over the place. <laughs> they can um, slide in your DMs. <laughs> um, I'm very active on social media. Yeah. So you can check either my company page. So Mind Matters Counseling and human development. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram as Mind Matters Tanzania, I'm on LinkedIn as Mind Matters. Um, and I'm sure if you search my name, Nadia Ahmed, <laughs> I should be able to how, pop up. How many Nadia Ahmed can we get on Google? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's a big one. Yeah. Maybe narrow it down to Tanzania. Yeah. But I am available. Um, maybe we can put down my information. Yeah. Um, as part of the, the link or description down yeah, there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I am here. I'm practicing full time. I one, one of the reasons, oh, oh, what is and Summer, you guys are expensive. <laughs> yes. You guys are very expensive. We cannot afford you. So, come back, how can you use the challenge? So, come back to the how a tafutu to Kongina Ila. You guys are just expensive. So it makes it hard to come to Tanzania, Kaida, and then Elisha Family, and then you find And then. I need to take care of my mental health by meeting a specialist. Yes. Well, there, most of us, well, I know for myself, I have a sliding scale. Mm. So we look at what is your income? What are you making? Okay. Oh. Um, what is my price? Yeah. Where can we meet? Oh. Where each of us is happy. Great. You know, so, so that's a service. And I, I feel most, a lot of different therapists have it yeah. here. Um, I'm not sure specifically, but I know I have that that service. Okay. I even do. Kwa tu kubo na diamu kesi ngere. Kwa tu mbwa hamjelewa. Ana chuma anisha. Ukienda kwa ke. Ah, ata kumbia yeye na chaji kesi gani? Lakini ata utanga na we una e na una pata kesi gani? Alafu mna zamu kongea mkafike kesi ambacho watu wili mtaridi kana chuo. Na mna zamu kafanya kazi vizuri from there. Yeah, yeah. And the sessions usually uta like kwa ida ni once a week like consecutive sessions yeah. like any depending again on your budget and how much you can put aside for your mental health yeah. it can be once after two weeks yeah. or it can be once a month you know some sometimes that you need you need an outlet and 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 that's it and get some tools yeah. from your therapist and then you go off and work on them yeah. so it doesn't have to be traditionally every other week we have to meet yeah. If your budget doesn't allow that, then it can be once in a month. Yeah. You know, once after every two weeks. Yeah. So there's a lot of options. Like I think a lot of people want to go 
so they don't really bother asking yeah. because they're already thinking they're expensive it is a lot of work i don't even know what is done here when i do it, it's like yeah. what do i sit there and i tell them my problems and what yeah. you know what 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 happens then yeah. mm. no, but it's really it's not that hard just if you just call up any psychologist i'm like nomba uniambie kwanza wewe unafanya nini now how does this work mm. and you know what what exactly can i get out of this a lot of us we are open we are ready to, to to have this conversation yeah. you know it's just that people are afraid that if i ask then i'm trapped yeah. you're not you're not supposed to ever feel like just by emailing or asking on the phone then you are committing yourself yeah. and i get a lot of people on new lisa yeah. on social media so how much is your fees do you offer this uh, what can i get from this and then they never come back Yeah. Maybe the responses they got they didn't like. Yeah. When gine they get to understand better and mm. then they show up. Yeah. You know so again uliza. Be yako shingapi? Bona it's a bit too much. Me I can afford x amount. Atakwambia, okay, x amount works for me. When do you want to schedule? Mm. Or x amount doesn't work for me but najua mtu. Yeah. Who charges that much. Yeah. You know so but if you don't ask You're never, never gonna know. know. You're never gonna know. You're, You're never, never gonna, gonna know. Men 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 the podcast. Na baada tumefikia mwisho kabisa wa episode yetu ya kwanza ya Men 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 the podcast. We had Mark in the studio na umemsikia story yake lakini pia asante kwa Nadia ambaye tulikuwa naye hapa ametusaidia sana ku, ku, kuelewa mambo mengi na kujua kwenye such situations at least wape pa kuanzia and that's the most important thing. Ameongea umuhimu wa ku accept kwamba yo man you're going through some shit. Kubali kwanza kubali kabisa kwamba yes ninachopitia ni kitu kigumu na i don't have to be brave about it yani napitia ni kitu kigumu na nahitaji msaada hiyo moja lakini pili angalie seiko yako angalia katika seiko yako ni nani anaweza kuwa support system you know it could be your moms could be your dad uh, it could be your close friends angalia watu gani ambao kwenye seiko yako kweli wanaweza kuwa watu ambao wanaweza kukupa ile support ambayo unahitaji hata kujudge hata kufanya nini and then be honest about your feelings tafuta watu ambao unaweza kuongea nao na kwa kuelewa and the most important thing is push comes to shove tafuta msaada wa, wa wataalamu kabisa i recommend therapy na nashauri sana i'm not saying uh, you should do that lakini like, ni ushauri wangu ambao mnaweza kutoa na dia, na dia yupo na kama umemsikiliza na utataka contact zake find a way to reach me and then nitakulinka na itakupa msaada sana kumbuka wewe kama mwanaume unasikiliza kipindi hiki Wewe kama mwanaume unasikiliza episode hii hauko peke yako. We all go through some challenges man. Wote tunapitia mambo mengi sana. Mingine tunaweza kuongea, mengine tunaona kama hatuwezi kuongea. Lakini all I know is talking about things inasaidia sana. You are not alone. Sio peke yako ambayo unapitia changamoto. And I'm here man. The brother is here. I'm here. Let's talk. Let's talk man. Let's talk. Hit me up. Let's talk. We we'll let you know when we are dropping our next podcast on Men 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 the podcast. Please stay safe. Please take care of yourself and the most important thing, take care of your mental health. It is pretty much everything. Paka next time. Mimi naitwa Michael Baruti. Asante sana kwa kusikiliza and enjoy the day. Live with Men 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 the podcast.